Zicha literally means to cook and fry. And this is a really popular type of food stall in Singapore. And I couldn't think of anything better than sitting down, sharing a meal with friends, eating things like cereal prawns, spicy sambal squid, ah, oh, so yum. We're gonna make two super popular zicha dishes today, my friends. We are eating like Singaporeans. All right, so cereal prawns. Maybe it's not a dish that you've heard of outside of Singapore, but if you're a Singapore local or you're traveling in Singapore, this is definitely a dish that you don't want to miss. I mean, there's like, there's butter, there's chili, there's spice. But first of all, let's set up a bit of a crumbing station. Well, it's more like a coating station, really. We need some flour. So I've got some corn flour and some plain flour as well. So we give that a mix. And then I need an egg. Just mix that egg, put that over there for a bit later. One of the things I think is so interesting about this dish is that you have um, this cereal, which you start off with here, and it kind of has like a, it's like a malt vanilla kind of flavor, and it fries up really crispy and crunchy, and it gives you like this addictive kind of, I need to eat more kind of situation that happens at the end. It's really cool. Uh, now, I also need some sugar here, and yes, we've got, the cereal, the sugar, and then we've also got milk powder. So it's kind of like a little bit of a breakfast vibe, but with fried prawns. Anyway, it's really good. I'm also gonna crumble in here a chicken stock cube. Let's give that a mix. Now we're really talking about jicha stalls today and one of the things that is really cool is that you know you can have stalls that uh, specialize in cuisine that is Chinese, Malay, Indian, Peranakan. Uh, this is the wonderful thing about eating in Singapore in general actually is that well, you get the benefit of so many different cultures and histories when it comes to eating the food there which I love which is why I've always said Singapore is like one of my favorite eating cities in the world. Just too delicious. <laughs> okay, so let's get frying. Um, we're gonna do our prawns first of all. Just need some oil. And I'm just gonna kind of shallow fry them, so I'll do it in batches. Mix the prawns in your egg. Grab my prawns, just kind of drain them a little bit, pop them in the flour. I love that style of eating in Asia though. You know, sit around, order what you want, sharing. I love going to Singapore where you sit at these hawkers and you meet locals and they tell you what to get and you end up hanging out with them and drinking beer and then they basically do the ordering for you. It's so true. Yeah. Well, that's what, I think that's the other thing about traveling in Singapore is that I think Singaporeans in general are very opinionated about their food in a good way, right? Like you could ask anyone, a taxi driver, a street stall vendor, or, you know, one of your cousins or your friend or whatever, and everyone's got a different answer about who makes the best sambal, who makes the best uh, bakute, who makes the best, you know, Hainan chicken, all those things. And I don't mind trying them all out, you know. So if you have a look here, these prawns are looking already very delightful. I mean, I love that kind of crispy, craggly coating. That looks yum. So you'll know they're done when they look all like crispy and crunchy, just like this guy. And that's a delicious looking prawn right there. All right, so prawns are done, looking lovely and crispy and golden. Uh, just a couple more things before we get started in the wok again. I'm going to use some bird's eye chilies here and just wanna slice them up. Got some curry leaves. Okay, so now we need some butter. It's gonna go into my clean wok here. Now in with my chilies and the curry leaves. Ah, oh, already that is looking and smelling so good. I'm gonna add in my prawns now, toss those around. And my cereal mix. You immediately get like this beautiful kind of like malt vanilla <laughs> flavor and the butter is like buttery and oh, it smells really good. Now just at the end here, I want to season with some salt some white pepper, toss that around. Okay, and we are looking really good here. Wow. But before I sit down and share my prawns, um, I'm gonna make some sambal squid. Mm -hmm. 
So to start off my sambal, I've got some chilies here that have been soaking in some hot water. That's just to soften them up. Um, and I'm using quite a few here. I've got 22 to be exact because I like my sambal spicy, but you know, you could um, pat it out with a little bit more shallot or garlic if you wanted to make it a little bit less spicy to suit your tastes. Um, and this is the cool thing about sambals. Like, so sambal translates to condiment. And I would have to say in Asia, like a very essential condiment um, one of those things that people just can't live without uh, so uh, the version that we're making today uh, includes shrimp paste so it's a sambal belachan uh, and it is it's spicy funky uh, savory salty like all the things uh, it's really really yum so if you haven't experienced sambals before please it's sort of like the world of hot sauce like once you get started you'll literally just you just can't stop <laughs> <laughs> particularly if you like spicy things like me. Okay, so I'm just really um, roughly chopping my chilies into my blender here. Just some scissors is the easiest way to do this. And you can save that chili water, please, because I'm gonna need that a little bit later on. You'll see why. Um, now to my chilies, I'm also gonna add some shallots. Now there are a couple of little secrets to the cooking and frying of a really good sambal, which we'll get to a little bit later on. Um, but for the moment, we're just basically making like a spice paste. So I've got my shallots and then some fresh red chili here as well. Some lemongrass, some garlic. Now, I definitely need to include my shrimp paste here, which is the Bellatan. Now, I have wrapped my shrimp paste in a little bit of foil, um, basically to really kind of release all the aroma and flavor from the shrimp paste. I think it's um, quite useful to sort of dry roast it, first of all. You can do it in the oven, but I think it's actually quicker in a, a wok or a pan. So I just put my wrapped shrimp paste into the wok and just let that heat through for a little while, a few minutes. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of my chili soaking liquid here as well, because that's gonna help everything kind of um, catch in the blender, if you like. It's just a little bit more flavor than just adding water. Okay, so this shrimp paste is looking pretty good. I'm going to open it up, add that into your blender. And you just wanna blend this till you get a smooth paste. Okay. In here. I love this fiery red color already. Oh, so good. Okay. Now the last thing here is to stir through some turmeric. And just before I go to cook my sambal, I'm just gonna slice up a few more things. I need some onion. And I also need some palm sugar here as well. So now time to cook the sambal. And what you wanna do is get your wok or your pan going and you wanna add in like a decent amount of oil here, at least a quarter of a cup. And then go in with your sambal. I like to start it off really low. Um, I find that there's oil and there's, you know, a wet paste and if it's too high, uh, you will get a lot of splatter. So just my little tip there. Now here's the part where you need to exercise a little bit of technique here. So as you mix the sambal when you're first frying it, you'll see it kind of gets a little bit of a curdly kind of texture. So keep cooking that, and then slowly the oil will sort of absorb into the ingredients. So if you have a look in here, you can see that oil is now starting to reappear on the sides there, also through the middle. So now I know that we're in a good place to keep going. So I'm gonna add in my onions. And again, you wanna give those onions some time to soften up and get nice and sweet. In the meantime, I'm gonna prep my squid. So what I've got here is um, squid tubes. They've been cleaned already. And then I've also got my squid tentacles as well. I actually think they're one of the best bits. <laughs> um, but I've gone with a baby squid here because I think they tend to be a little bit more tender. And what I'm gonna do is just slice the squid tubes into rings. Now I do have a video on how to prepare squid, how to clean it and prepare it. So you can watch that if you're interested as well. Just 
keep stirring my onions every so often. My onions have really softened up nicely. So I'm gonna go in with tamarind and tamarind's gonna give us a slightly sour flavor to our sambal. And then you have your palm sugar. And now you can add in your squid. Now just keep stir frying until your squid is cooked through. It only needs a few minutes. Now this is smelling really amazing. There's some big punchy flavors going on here. And I for one am very excited. It's the kind of thing that when it comes steaming out of that kitchen when you're in the Hawker Center and you're like, whoa, that looks so good. All right, so lime on the side. So there you go, friends, um, an experience of Jita stalls in Singapore with two very popular dishes, the sambal squid and the cereal prawns. Uh, now, if we were all together in Singapore eating at a Jita stall, we would have lots of different dishes to share. Um, so let's go and share some dishes, please, because I'm really hungry. <laughs> Hey guys, if you love eating delicious things as much as I do, then you should subscribe and hit that little bell button so you always know when I'm making something super yum.